give me the definition for culture. Our primary school definition for culture. We, culture is the way of life. So by just looking at you, I should be able to know where you are coming from, right? The same way, by just looking at you, I should be able to say you are an Adventist or not, right? If you all agree with me on that point, then I think you also agree with me on the fact that we are what we eat. We are what we eat. We thank God so much for globalization. Globalization is something good, but there is a negative side. Now, people don't even, let me say, they are cans or Ashantis. Some of us don't even want to say, I, I eat fufu again. What's your favorite fried rice? Um, what can I get to you on my way back from work? Oh, some pizza, some shawarma. What happens to our banku and okra stew? Our ampesi with our grinded kontomri with the abedru and all those sorts of things. If we are to mention the food that we took this morning, um, it will surprise us that most of us most of us, or let me say, some of us didn't take uh, any of our local foods. If even the person took our local food, there's something foreign added to it. As I earlier on said, globalization is good. But God, in his own wisdom, he created us from the soil. Have you sat down to ask yourself, if God created us from the soil, what is best for us? Since we are from the soil, what is best for us? The food best for us is from the soil. Not those from the machines. Not the processed foods. Because of globalization, um, I wouldn't like to buy fresh tomato. I would prefer the canned tomato to the fresh one. The can, though, is expensive sometimes, but when you use a little, whatever you are preparing, whether soup or stew, is enough for you. Ask yourself, is it raw tomato that is being used for the canned tomato? The ladies who attest to the fact that when you buy, let's say, a bowl of tomato and you are to boil it, by the time you are done cooking with the, um, the tomato, you realize what you have is not enough. It's not enough at all. So ask yourself, where do they get all those tomato, the one in the can? Is it raw tomato or what are they added to it? Have you ever sat down to think about these things? Someone is even shy to be seen buying fish from the market. She would prefer the canned ones. That one is guy. That one is fresh. Um, Assuming I'm to prepare food and someone asks me, what are you using? I'll be a little bit shy to say I'm using Emma. But I can boldly say I'm using sardine or canned beef. But the Emma is far better than your canned sardine or your corn fish. Why am I saying so? All the canned foods have been processed. They go through machines. And all the processes that they go through, 
we lose some of the natural nutrients that's in the food. Although some are being fortified, how sure, what instrument will you use to test for the quantity that they are saying they've been fortified with? But you are sure that if I buy fresh tomato, I know I have my vitamin C in there. It's not being processed. The fiber is intact. With this pandemic, we are encouraging the intake of more vitamins and minerals. Where can we get these vitamins and minerals? From our local foods, from our vegetables, from our fruits. For our students, I know most of us, um, it's difficult for us to even get those things. But when you take into consideration your health, when you know that whatever I put into this machine has an effect on me. This afternoon, I want us to look at just three things. Um, we have a discussion this afternoon. I will entreat each and every one of us to make it a date. The Sabbath is for the Lord. We are to think about things of heaven. So I'll make my presentation or my talk very short so that we can all go back, have some rest, and come back. What I want us to have a look at is our salt intake. How much salt are we supposed to take in? Um, I want to pose a question. Who knows? How much is much? How much salt is much for the body? Does anybody have an idea? Research has shown that we are not supposed to take or taking more than a teaspoon of salt a day has health implications on us. Taking more than a teaspoon. So ask yourself from morning to evening, how much salt am I consuming? Someone may say, it doesn't matter if you take in too much salt. What matters is taking in more water to dilute it in your body. Yes, you dilute the salt. But don't forget, whatever you take in, your body has to work on it. It's not only your heart that you give work to when you take in too much salt. When you take in too much salt, we know that from our simple science, we know salt is made up of sodium and chloride, chlorine. The sodium part is what's so serious about our salt. Um, when you're taking so much sodium, you will be forced to, get, to take in so much water. But that much water that you're taking will not come out. The sodium will retain the water in your body, increasing the blood volume, which gives your heart more work to do. Because your heart has to pump had all that amount of um, blood. And your kidney, you also stress your kidney because it also filters the blood. So when you are taking in anything, ask yourself, how is my body going to make good use of what I'm taking in? And let's not forget, you may not see the implication right now. It's not like um, taking in a bad food that some few minutes or hours after taking in, your stomach will alert you that what you took in is bad, so visit the loo. It, it doesn't always work like that. Some of the things that we take in accumulate over years. Um, sometimes some people tell us that um, for kids, you can just feed them with anything. You feed your child with anything, 
by the time she gets to the university, or by the time she is in his or her middle age, the problem has already accumulated. So if the person is not someone who is careful about what he or she takes in, the problem is there already. Adding something to it to compound it, and you have work to do. We say life begins at 40. And research also shows that by 40, most of our organs, the way it works will start reducing. So if life begins at 40, 40 you are now about to enjoy your life. But because you didn't take good care of yourself, you can't enjoy your life. Is that what we all want? No. By 40, some of us, um, by the time we complete school and get a job, we'll be um, around 35. By 40 years, life is now beginning for us. And mostly to, um, because uh, some people will say, it's been long, or I now have, I take this salary, so I have to eat according to my salary. It's never true. We'll talk more about that in the afternoon. But we have to be very, very careful about our salt intake. We don't pay attention to um, the things that we take into our body. We have to start reading food labels, especially if we take in um, processed food. You read it and it will tell you the quantity of salt in that very product you are eating. So assuming I take um, a tin tomato, I look at the quantity of salt in it, take a sardine or candy, look at the quantity of salt in it. Let's say that's my, for my lunch. For my supper, I should know the quantity of salt I'm supposed to take. But most times, we buy products, we don't read it. And mostly, some of the manufacturers, they are so wise that when they normally write those labels, you have to be someone who is curious or inquisitive to see what is written there. And it's not as bold as the name of the product itself. So we have to take time, we have to take interest in reading all those things, especially if we want to live long and live healthy. It's another thing living long and another thing living healthy. You can live long, but you'll be bedridden. So let's take care of that. And I also want us to take note, especially the ladies. Now, Indomie is everywhere. Everyone is talking about Indomie, the fastest way. As students, I know most of us do take it. The quantity of salt in it. I bought one myself to eat. And after taking the Indomie, let's say within um, two to three hours after taking it, I'd already drank six sachets of water. I was just thirsty, and I couldn't quench that thirst. I was just taking in so much water, so just, just ask yourself, if just for that few minutes I'm taking that water, what work am I giving to my heart? And if you're not lucky, if you are someone who sleeps right after eating, you can just imagine what will happen in your system. We have to be careful about those things. Another thing I want us to take note of is the fats. Someone may say, oh, when I'm preparing my food, I don't put in so much fat. But ask yourself, what food am I eating? Maybe I'm taking some fried yam with some pepper and shito, with some fried fish. All those foods are fried. And if you didn't prepare it yourself, maybe you bought it outside. What they normally do is, the oil that they've used to fry the yam, when it goes bad, they will use that one for the shito. Because the shito is already dark. So you wouldn't notice it. The oil nature has, the oil has been denatured. You take that one to your body. You have energy to go about your work work, by, you, by the end of the day, you are putting so much stress on your organs and your system that you pay the price for it. 
That one, you can't run away from it. Someone will also say, um, I don't like, I don't want to put on weight, so I'm dieting. The person will take in pie, thinking that the pie, looking at the size of it, the person is counting the calorie by the size of that small, that two CD pie that he or she bought. But the amount of margarine, the butter, in there will surprise you. I think sometimes we have to pay a visit to um, where they prepare those things, and it will surprise you. The amount of fats being put in there will surprise you. Um, someone will say, um, I'm taking bread. Now, the common bread that we get from the market is the butter bread, whether you like it or not. Even the wheat bread is just the buttered bread that they've sprinkled some wheat in it. So, although you tell yourself, I'm taking wheat bread, but you are taking butter bread. And with what is going on, I think we have to, not just the ladies, the men as well, we have to learn how to prepare some of these things on our own so that we will take very good care of ourselves. It doesn't take much time in preparing those things. When you want to learn how to prepare all those things, you realize it's just some few ingredients that I need. And there are things that you can substitute for the butter or the margarine that they are using for the bread. We have healthy oils that, um, if you want to prepare it yourself, you can substitute that for the butter or the margarine because we all know that uh, saturated fats are not good for us. And we don't look at those things in those foods. But I want us to pay so much attention to what we eat, because um, what you take in will affect your mood. Sometimes you meet someone, you've, maybe you are even meeting the person for the first time. The person doesn't know you from anywhere, but the person is already angry at you. And you stand and look at that person, what did I do wrong? It's not what you did wrong. It's about the food that the person took in. It's affecting the hormones. It's affecting his or her mood. And I mostly talk to people that um, not, you, you can't say, I don't care about what people are eating. And that thing has been so obvious to me, especially now that I have a kid. Whenever she's going to school, she tell you, um, why is my snack? And she doesn't want to take, we know kids, they don't want to be different from their peers. So when you give her something healthy, she will go to the school and bring it back to you. And when you don't give her any snack, she will tell you that when they were taking their snacks, I was just seated looking at them. You prepare a healthy meal for her, she will tell you that I don't want this, I want the indomie, I want the fried rice, I want all those things. I realized then that it's not just about what I eat, but it's about what we all eat. Because if we can make informed decisions about what we take in, your kid will not bring something to school. That will pressure my kid to also try to eat that. And for kids, you can't um, make them understand. At their level, they wouldn't even understand. The grown-ups, we don't even understand how more than the kids. So please, I will entreat each one of us to make cautious efforts. We have to put in efforts. A good health doesn't happen by chance. You have to work for it. You have to make informed decisions. And sometimes we give excuses. I didn't have any option. When you plan towards it, you will have an option. We need to sit down. I know I'm going for lectures. The lectures will take about four or five hours. I've taken my breakfast. I'll be hungry. Then let me make provision for my lunch or a snack. If not anything at all, I can pick a cucumber and send it. But when we are on break, 
I will rather go and purchase the um, either pancake or um, spring roll or pie. Then I will top it up with the sugars. I'll call it drink. Meanwhile, you are just taking in sugar and water, which you could have easily done that in your room. You add that after taking the pie, you flash it with the sugars. And you feel good. It's time we pay so much attention to it. Um, as the scripture said, whatever we do, we have to glorify God. So let's try our best to eat and eat well. Eat and through what we eat, preach the word of God to others. Because when people look at you, why are you always taking in vegetables? Why are you always taking in fruit? You seize that opportunity and tell that person about God. I hope God will bless the little that we've heard this afternoon and his Holy Spirit will help us to make an informed decision and change our lifestyle. Amen. Amen.